Okay, here we go, early in the morning. See what the deer are doing. We put out a little food for them. It's cold, around about 20, 24 degrees here in Texas. Of course, the sun's out, so we'll have 60, 60 degrees by about noontime. A couple of deer crossing down there. Wonderful stuff. Uh, what we're uh, basically going to just be touching on this morning in the grand field theory, you know, why magnetism and uh, gravity, we're going to unite those events and how science has come from Newtonian on, actually starting all the way back to Aristotle, who probably had it more correct and was using a better approach than we have today. But, you know, we're, we're, we're putting a lot of reliance. We're putting quite a bit of reliance on mathematics. And... Um, we, can, we think that uh, right now in all the colleges and universities uh, that, uh, that, that mathematicians or people who are good in math, skilled in math, are going to give us a view of the world we live in, uh, a view that's going to explain, you know, right down to astronomical uh, observations, uh, astro, uh, <laughs> I was going to say astro, okay, astronomical observations, right down uh, to the nature of, of atoms and uh, neutrons and electrons and how all this works. Now, we've been at it for a while, you know, since the atom bomb, we've e even been at it for a while. <laughs> and we've had a lot of people involved in it. And, and I, I hate, you know, I'm not trying to dish mathematicians and people who are good at math. Because people who are good at math are like people who are good at music. They're excellent. And they, you know, they come in all, all gradations. Some are extremely good. And uh, some, some, can, uh, some that aren't extremely good can always teach. <laughs> but um, we have a university system, a, a scientific system, that is based on this conceptualization that math and people who are good in math are going to lead us, lead us out of this morass we're in with understanding our universe. Okay, well, there's a there's a fundamental flaw in that logic. And before we even get into the fundamental flaw, let's just say this. You know, in the military, when you go into the military, you learn one thing and you learn it fast, and that is that success has many fathers, <laughs> and failure is an orphan. <laughs> I mean, what they say is that you never, never uh, take any time to consider reinforcing success. If a battalion is successful, you give it another battalion, you know. <laughs> However, if, they're, if they fail and they don't meet their objectives, or their line is broken, well, you don't reinforce you allow it to wither and you put your uh, you put your manpower where you need it you put your brains where you need it and of course when we're looking at this thing about trying to figure out how our universe works uh, the mathematical approach the concept has not really shed much light on it matter of fact uh, like they also say in the military a lot of smoke with no fire <laughs> and they ream it out Okay, and why do we not understand what these mathematicians are saying? Because, like music, uh, there are the notes and the procedures, and it's all very interesting. But if you don't have a little enjoy, en enjoyment and talent in this field, it's very difficult, you know, uh, to see where they're going with it. And mathematicians may feel very confident that they're just on the verge of another mathematical solution. Uh, well, there are a few more out there. One standing over there. <laughs> uh, right on the verge of it. Well, I don't mean to dish that field because those people are very smart. And like musicians, uh, the math mathematicians uh, are very good at what they do. And they give us a good product, a high fidelity, high sound. Electronics, you know, and mathem mathematics go hand in hand. Uh, 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 music and mathematics go hand in hand. But uh, they have failed us. And to consider it any other way, well, you must have an X to grind. <laughs> you must have a reason to be. And uh, you must be a mathematician to continually support this uh, unflagging belief in faith and trust in the system. Well, it hasn't produced anything, okay? 
So where do we go from there? Well, I would suggest logic. That is, think logical. Uh, and it's not that math, of course, uh, is not part of this physics we're studying. But it, it, right now, before we use too much more math or we worry too much uh, more about uh, reeling off six or seven more pages of idiotic, and I guess it all comes down to everybody saw the movie, uh, 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 The Day the Earth Stood Still. Well, you know, to, even the Martian who came from outer space went to talk to the guy with a bunch of math on the, uh, on the board. And that was, uh, no one could understand it, so therefore, uh, my goodness, it must be very important. Uh, you know, and we've always had a lot of faith in, in symbols. Okay, well, let's get away from this, and let's just progress into the area where maybe critical thought is really, really important. And to get with critical thinking, you have to come to some very fundamental conclusions before you can actually uh, think correctly. Okay, and you need to get over some basic problems. I think some of these ideas uh, we need to get over is one is religion. Uh, for basically, this is a flaw in conceptualization. Uh, quite frankly, if you allow yourself to feel giddy and high <laughs> with the thought of going to heaven, well, then you could not possibly be a scientist or you could not possibly ever come up with a critical thought uh, because your first emotional appeal is to or away from the laws of the universe. And they must be inv inviolate. That is, you cannot violate them. You cannot change them. They are the laws. And they will... Uh, as the IRS has often said, apply to everybody. <laughs> so let, let's start applying some laws that are in, inviolate that you cannot get around. So right away you would discourse that if you actually believe that a deity or something was above these laws of physics, the laws that run this universe, then you don't, we don't believe in this universe. We don't understand it. You know, uh, and you must pray every day because our life would change in a heartbeat, could change at the whim of this that does not apply itself to the violent laws of the nature of the universe and how they, how they operate. So let's go and make some, make some more observations here. Uh, these laws are unchanging, and they're fairly simple. Uh, simple things can last. Complex things change and break down. The universe is complex, but it's continually changing. But the laws that, oper that it operate on are so simple that uh, they are beguiling in their most simplest form. And of course, well, you know, we know some of these observations, and they make critical, they make fundamental sense. You know, everything is in motion. Okay, and that's that's your basic, most fundamental observation is no matter what we think, it is all in motion. Okay, and the next law is that the two that the two uh, uh, units of something like mass, say, or energy, however you look at it, cannot occupy the same space at the same time. That means, and in, in the corollary to that is that, of course, there's an action, uh, 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 a reaction for every uh, event. That is, if two, two pieces or two particles meet, there's going to be a reaction. And that reaction, of course, uh, can be, can be looked at in a number of ways. However, to call anything that comes out of that reaction another law is ridiculous. It's just we're measuring that reaction. Okay. Now, that would give us two laws of motion. And the mo and what we're talking about in the laws of motion, of, of course, is the laws of the universe. Because we already have mass as a given. We don't need a law for it because it's beyond laws. It is here. What we're trying to figure out is what it does as it is here and how, how it moves. And, of course, our next observation is that that which exists, whether it exists in the form of mass or energy, is a given. And it's the same thing. Energy and mass are one of the two. Thank goodness for Einstein and his brilliance. And this is where math gave us a, a wonderful insight. <clears throat> and and uh, these are the things, of course, why we, we praise math and we love math. 
uh, that E M equals M C square. That mass is changed in the energy, and of course now what we have lacked since Einstein on is how do we change energy into mass? Well, of course, it's right before our eyes. We don't like to think of it like that, but when we make, you know, uh, uh, rev up plutonium and uh, uranium and things like this and, and make it go boom, uh, we're actually creating mass. So we do see where, mat, where we change energy into mass. There are some over there sitting in the brush. There they are. Just taking a little time out. 10 minutes. Well, we're going to run over 10 minutes here, but not by much. I, I only get 15 minutes now. And this is a rambling discourse. I'm just having some fun right now. <clears throat> okay. So, there can be no God. Uh, because if you believe in the laws of the universe, the universe says that everything is in motion. That means God is in motion. You know, da, da, da. That God is in change. Therefore, the God we might have known <laughs> has changed into something else. And, of course, re recoming, rebirth, da -da, you know, coming back into it. That, that is that light or energy is, ex is expelled from mass, but it's still mass, and it moves through the universe, becoming mass once more. And we can get into that, too. That's interesting. So where are we with the laws of physics, well, or the laws of the universe? First of all, math is not going to get us there because it's like music. It gives us high fidelity and a lot of sheets, but it's not going to cross the threshold of understanding. It's, it, it, it's, an evalu it, it's, a, it's a quantitative type approach, not an evaluative approach. We make beautiful electronic gear, and we have not the faintest idea how it operates. Okay, so given one, we make computers. <clears throat> we really don't understand how it works, <laughs> other than counting light bulbs, okay? You could look at it like that. Uh, so who is or who is going to formulate and understand uh, if mathematicians and so-called physicists who are supposed to be mathematicians cannot solve this critical problem? Well, it's the old thing, the sword and the stone, uh, the, uh, the, the kid with the finger in the dike, the Dutch boy. Uh, it's going to come from just a fundamental look. It's right there. It's right here in front of us. The only reason we cannot understand it is because we have to understand we have a religious preference. We have a fear of death. And therefore, we're going to hate what this is going to tell us. <laughs> but what it's also going to tell us when we look at it, it should give you a rosy, warm feeling for the rest of life and the rest of the universe. An atom is in spin, even an electron, and they are spinning at a, such an un unbelievable rate. You know, if you want to call it the speed of light, call it the speed of light. And can you imagine from a, any top that would be spinning at the speed of light what the inertia would be? And what, what's the half-life of radiation? If that's the event, the changes we're going to go through, and the times we're going to go through. Let me see over here. What do we got? I only got about, let's see, about two minutes. Well, then what we're looking at is a process that is dependent on the change of, a, of atomic particles. How they're going to spin down because they give off energy, mass, you could say, and how long they're going to operate in that procedure. <laughs> So we got plenty of time on our hands as mankind goes, as the world goes. As individuals, no, we're just soldiers and pawns. We're going to die very rapidly. But the universe, this portion of it, is going to go on for millions, millions of years.